top-notch artistic people are working hard to bring to the screen our biggest release of the year. Hail Caesar is a prestige picture with one of the biggest stars in the world. A truth we could see if we had but... We started thinking about this character who ended up being played by George Clooney. Actually, we thought about him as being George Clooney, a movie star kidnapped from the set of this big sandal epic in the early 50s. This was a pretty big film um, uh, for Joel and Ethan especially. There's a lot of music, there's a lot of visual effects, there's a lot of sound work, there's, there's just a lot. But for editorial, it just means there's a lot of balls in the air. Their cutting process is, is incredibly unique. Once everything's been shot and production is complete, they start cutting and they start from the beginning of the movie to the end of the movie. So they start at scene one, and for Hail Caesar, they cut to scene 77. We don't have an editor working while we're shooting because we're the editors and we're confident enough while we're shooting to know whether or not we're getting what we need. And we shoot a long day and then we're tired and we go home and go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> we shot Hail Caesar uh, on 35 millimeter film, something that we're used to doing, but because it's becoming more phased out, it creates a little bit of a complication. Because we shot film, we, it was very important to us that we have the film key code, which is something you wouldn't need if you were shooting digitally, but it was really important that we have that as part of our metadata, because we would use it for visual effects pulls, for scanning, and God forbid if we ever had to go back to the original negative. So it was great that Adobe was able to get that in the metadata for us. Cutting now on the computer is just a strange extension of how we used to cut on film. I would be an upright moviola and I'd take the dailies and mark it like a perspective in point for a shot, perspective out point. Joel would be next to me on a flatbed and he would assemble it and then jigger it around. On the computer, I can basically do the same thing except, you know, not handling physical pieces of film. Joel and Ethan sit next to each other and they really collaborate, they really do. And Ethan, you know, pulls clips and, and then sends them over to Joel when he has the clips for a scene and Joel assembles them. When Ethan is finished picking all of his selects, he'll ring a little bell and we'll know that we can pick up the selects and start assembling them into the timeline. The bell is an important part of the process actually. And it's become even Pavlovian to a certain extent. Yes, it generates certain sensory or hormonal impulses that have deeply to do with editing. I have no idea. <laughs> Actually, it's nice. It's kind of, the bell's sort of a reminder of like, you know, it makes us feel like we're doing like a very serious job. <laughs> Editing is a tough job, and it's hard when you constantly feel like the system you're working on stops you along that path. So once you get used to ways of working, it's very difficult to change those. We got used to cutting on Premiere very quickly, actually. We had done small sort of things on an Avid in the past. We looked at Premiere, and what we liked was that it was very similar to Final Cut in many ways that we had sort of grown used to and adapted to in terms of how we cut. And in particular, it was very flexible in a way that was important to us specifically with the way we cut, which was sort of easy manipulation of multiple tracks. It feels like analog, you know, you get old, you wanna feel like you know where you are, like you're doing analog even when you're not. Movies in general become much more visual effects oriented. It's obviously a lot more flexible than any other platform, really, any other system that we've worked on before. All of those things are kind of contributed to making that a fairly easy transition into... No, so you don't have to dump the bin anymore to look for the missing flag. That's true. <laughs> Both from a production point of view and from a visual effects point of view, there were many more visual effects in this movie than we're used to dealing with. Reframing things, resizing things, moving within shots. A range of the work was image stabilization. We wanted to add additional camera movement, such as rocking, or there's a transition that needs to be done. And a big portion of this job was splits. So splits being if you liked one actor's take from one cut, but you preferred another actor's take who's in the same image, you can combine them both together. The integration between after Effects and Premiere works perfectly because by using dynamic link, you can send that entire sequence 
including effects and masks, into After Effects and fine tune it a little bit more. There's just a lot more capability and flexibility in terms of integrating visual effects and in terms of actually accomplishing visual effects. You have to be on a program like this that's letting you do it simply and not getting in the way. Adobe worked with us to show us tools in Premiere that have now become parts of the cutting process for us. And by the end, we completed the picture and we're very happy on Premiere. This has been a very easy transition for us now working on Premiere and um, I think as cutting becomes more sort of uh, involved with visual effects that's become increasingly important that you have platforms like this that you can cut and where that's all helping you sort of see the film as you go along the way it's going to be when it's finished. If we have, have faith, 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 cut! Ah.